Okay, so welcome to my very first video series on the instrument rating ground school. Now, um, as you can see here, I'm going to start off with spatial disorientation. The reason why I start with spatial disorientation is because normally when you're going from um, an instrument, you're probably coming from private level. Now, private level, you're not normally in the clouds. How many of you private pilots out, out there are actually straight and level? You got the aircraft trimmed out just perfectly. You got your heading, you're going straight. You look down to check where your map is at and where you are on the map, and all of a sudden, uh, okay, there I am, cool. And then you look up and it's like, oh, shoot, let me go back to normal. How many times has that happened? Well, that's spatial disorientation. When you're flying instrument, you're gonna be flying in the clouds, you're going to be experiencing a lot of that. This is why I really start with this uh, spatial disorientation. You have two sensory uh, uh, nerves, systems in your body that tells you if you're accelerating, decelerating, going up, down, rolling, left and right. And you gotta be able to understand uh, what those are. So the first one you have proprioceptive. This is literally, um, uh, you're feeling in the seat of your pants like literally if you're sitting in a chair you know that you're sitting in the chair because you can feel yourself sitting in the chair let's say you're sitting in a chair and somebody kicks that chair from underneath you and you fall you fall on the floor you know that you're on the floor because you can feel it on the floor that's your proprioceptive system now the vestibular system now these are the er, these are the nerves that you probably heard about before of the three canals that are in your ear and you have uh, the three canals, you got the fluid in them, you got, you got your cupola, that's the sensory nerves, that, so when the fluid moves and around the one of the canals, the hair is going to move this way, and if the, oh, let me get my marker, if the fluid is moving the other way, this way, the hairs are going to be going that way. If there's no fluid moving at all, then the hairs are going to be sticking up just like this. I'm going to show you a clip right now, a little demonstration of what I mean. Okay, so here in this experiment, I'm going to do, I'm going to have a glass of water and I have um, some very light threads. And these threads are going to be simulating the sensory nerves on the cupola that we were uh, explaining earlier. Now, as you can see, I'm rotating the glass nice and slowly, faster and faster, but when I stop, see how they move in the direction? So they're not moving, they're not moving, they're not moving. But the faster I move it, then the, you can actually see that how they are moving toward the rotation. Now if I move it really slow, um, you're not gonna see any movement at all. And this is the same thing we can experience uh, when we talk about leans. And we'll get into ice flags here in a little bit uh, shortly, but you can see how these sensory nerves move with the fluid. And this is exactly how they work in the inner ear and in our canals. Another thing too, is that's just the capullus. Now we're gonna be talking about the utricle and the cyclus. Now this, this senses forward and back movement and this, uh, this relates to your sonographic illusion. We'll talk about ice flags in a bit. But before we go into ice flags, I really want you to understand this part. And for those of you who don't know what ice flags is, don't worry, you'll, you'll know all about it here in a second. So I'm gonna show you a clip now. Okay, so here I'm going to demonstrate of how the, the sensory nerves inside the brain and inside those three canals actually work all together. So I was actually, so obviously I'm, I'm tilting my head back, I'm straight and level, I'm, I'm simulating that I'm, I'm in, a, in a descent. And now I'm going to use my glass of water trick as you can see. So as, if I tilt the glass backwards, um, I have a sticker that, that's representing the signal telling the brain that hey, you are in a climb. So straight and level obviously the glass is straight and level but as I tilt my head back you see how the water is kind of lining up with you are climbing so this is what the nerves are inside is telling your brain now if I go into a steep descent you can see how the water is kind of lining up with the descent now what happens if you're straight and level and you do an abrupt forward motion that can also tell that your brain is actually a climb how boom look at that if you look at that in slow motion and then vice versa, uh, the same thing happens if you are if you come to an abrupt halt. The same thing will happen when you come to a stop. The sensory nerves will tell your brain that hey, you must be descending, even though you're not. So, with that being said, this is literally how all of this works. So now let's go into ice flags. And let's put together why I did this silly experiment with the glass. Okay, and ice flag is what we're gonna be talking about next. Okay, so the very first one inversion, I'm going to use my little glass demonstration again. So when you are climbing, you are, there you can see right there, and as I move back the water like this, 
it lines up with that little level right there and it says, hey, I'm in a climb. However, when you're up in the climb and you're stabilized, you're no longer gonna feel like this. The brain's gonna re -able, it's gonna restabilize and it's gonna feel like this as if it's going straight and level. Now, if you're climbing a nice, super a nice climb, nice climb, and you find out it's like, hey, um, you look at your uh, altimeter, it's like, oh, I overshot. So what do you do? You pitch down really quick. Now, what happened in that very instant, it actually went this way. I don't know if you can really see it on the camera right there, but that's what will happen. The fluid will actually go back. Now, what happens when you are feeling like this? You feel like you're tumbling backwards. So what do you do when you normally tumble backwards? You push the yoke even further. But what do you think is gonna happen when you're already like this and you push it even further and further? The fluid is gonna keep on going back and back and back, which is gonna actually increase the effect. So that is what inversion is, and it's very good to be able to know what that is. All right, so next is Coriolis. Um, if you've ever been spinning in a chair, spinning in a chair, spinning in a chair, and then all of a sudden you abruptly put your head down and you're, it really in, increases the effectiveness, well, that's exactly what Coriolis is. Um, this can also happen when you're in the plane, it can really disorient you. If you're, let's say you're doing a really sharp, steep turn, and then you drop your pen and then you look down and you can have that really crazy effect. Well, that's literally what Coriolis is. Now, elevator, I don't really, really like this one. Um, as, much, as long as I've been flying, I have never experienced this. I was flying in the clouds and it was a lot of turbulence and I was bumped up and down, but I didn't really, didn't really experience this. And what this is, is if you're flying and you got an updraft, your body's gonna feel like, oh, I'm going up too high, and then you're gonna push the nose down. Or let's say you get a downdraft, oh, I'm going down, I'm gonna push the nose up. The correction for that is just to keep flying straight and level, keep your uh, keep your altitude the same, and uh, just fly that way. But this is, um, I actually believe that this is probably gonna be taken out soon if it not, hasn't already, but I really don't like this one. But if, um, you're studying and you're looking ice flags and there's elevator, then that's that's what that one's for. Okay, and false horizon is exactly what it sounds like. It's false horizon. You're looking out there and then you're you're flying on a on a cloud deck that looks straight and level. So you're gonna keep your wings nice and straight and level. Or you see a, a bunch of city lights at night and you see a line of city lights and it looks just like this. You're in straight and level. But once you look at your attitude direction indicator, you're gonna find how the airplane's actually in a bank. Um, so yeah, so let me actually zoom out here. So you can probably, I know the background kind of uh, kind of gave it away here, but yeah, this is false horizon. Okay, and leans. Leans is uh, what a lot of private pilots have experienced already. Maybe, that, maybe didn't know what it was called, but it actually is called leans. And as I was saying earlier, you're flying, you're flying, you got the aircraft turned out, everything's good to go, you're looking down, looking down, and looking down, and all of a sudden, you don't even feel it. The aircraft's moving so gently, it's so nice. Now, you look at your ADI, you notice you're in a bank, so what do you do? You normally, abruptly, move it right back, right? So, but when that happens is, and let me get my glass again, so, I'm in a bank, I'm in a bank, I'm in a bank, but notice how the glass is actually moving. I don't know if you can see that, it's actually moving. But if you are actually coordinated, it's not gonna look like this. It's actually gonna look like this. If you're nice and coordinated, your butt's gonna be right in the seat, and you're not gonna be, gonna be able to tell. That's why, and that's because this is nice and flat, because it's telling your brain that, hey, you're starting level. However, once you find out that you are in a bank and you start abruptly turning the other way, then what's gonna happen is, this is gonna go whoop, like that. So what happens when this is like this? Oh, you're thinking you're too far this way. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna actually over bank and over correct to get back to where it's at. And then you just, you're all over the place at that point. But that is what leans is. And for autochronesis, how many times have you been in a really, really, really dark room and all of a sudden you see something like, Oh my gosh, uh, that really blinded me. And then when you open up your eyes, you can still kind of see it lingering off on the side. And not only that, but you can see it kind of moving. So when this happens, when this does happen when you're flying at night, you might want to be aware of this because if that does happen, that little light that could be moving, you might mistake it as an aircraft. And then you look over and then it, it moves wherever your eyes are moving and it keeps moving, it keeps moving. 
So that is autokinesis. All right, graveyard stall and graveyard spin. We'll go into the stall <clears throat> first. So graveyard stall, what happens when you are going down and you are also in a bank. So you're going down in a bank in the bank and you don't realize you're in a bank, you just look at your altitude and you see your altitude just dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping. So what do you normally just tend to do? You pitch up, but what happens when you pull up while you're in a bank? You're probably gonna do enter what's called an accelerated stall and you're going to end up stalling, putting yourself right into a stall, right into the graveyard. So essentially that's what that is. Um, and you may wonder, it's like, oh, that's why during a uh, unusual attitudes when we're going down to power to idle, wings level first, and then pull and recover. So that's so we don't enter ourselves in a graveyard stall um, in VFR conditions. But anyway, um, graveyard spin is kind of like what we explain in leans. This is if you are in an established spin, what happens is your fluid is actually going to, it's, it's going to end up going from this to this. It's going to be nice and stable. And then as soon as you abruptly recover, what's going to happen to that nice solid uh, uh, level fluid is going to abrupt. And then the same with that exact things in leans, you're going to think, oh, I must have overbanked. And then you're going to put yourself right back into the same situation, right back into the spin again. Uh, because you want to get back to your brain wants to get back to that equilibrium state as it was before and then you ended up putting yourself into another spin unfortunately and somatographic illusion this is what I was talking about before when you are on the when you're getting that acceleration when you accelerate and you can't see anything what you're going to experience is this you're going to accelerate and the fluid is going to go backwards right it's going to go backwards when it does go backwards, it's gonna you're gonna feel like you're tumbling backwards. So what do you do with the yoke? You push it down forward. Uh, most likely, this is not when you want to push the yoke down forward because what are you normally doing when you're accelerating? You're probably accelerating to take off, right? You want to pull back, not forward. And the same exact thing opposite when you're decelerating. When you're decelerating, really good. Let's say you put those speed brakes on and you decelerate, decelerate, decelerate. Well, what does this look like? Deceleration. This is gonna put the water the other your level like this. And it shows that you're going to be in a descent. So what do you normally do? You pull up, but you really don't want to do that because if you're going really, really, really slow already and you pitch the nose up, what do you think is going to happen? Okay, so that's all the ice flags. Another thing I want to talk about too is motion sickness. Why do we also get motion sickness, especially when you're first starting to fly? Uh, what happens is ba basically back in the old days when we were before technology is what it is today and we were living in caves and we had to figure out what to eat, right? So we were eating berries and eating all these fruits and vegetables or whatnot. We didn't know if it was okay for us or not, but hey, we had to eat, right? So we ate, but what's inside of our systems, inside of our bodies is a natural um, sense of poison. Like say we ate the wrong thing and all of a sudden, oh my gosh, that's poison. Your body will naturally tend to get that stuff out of you, no matter what it is. Um, and how it senses that is if something is not really connecting to the brain like it should, like if your eyes are seeing something but your brain is, con is, is feeling something else, your proprietary, ses uh, your proprietary and your vestibular system is not lining up, then your brain is going to think, hey, I must be poisoned or something, so let's get everything out of you. That's why you start to feel a little bit woozy. Even if you have nothing in your stomach, you can still feel like you want to puke. So this will happen when you're very new to flying. You know, the human bodies aren't meant to fly. So what happens is you, when you're flying up there and especially doing steep turns for a lot of the new pilots out there, they're not really used to that, all those extra G's and they be they might be looking inside the cockpit more instead of outside. Um, if you look outside more and see the horizon and let your brain make sense of what it's seeing and what it's feeling, that can really help a lot. However, if you're looking at the gauges and you're feeling all these G's and you're looking just focused on the gauges, you're going to misalign your proprioceptive system and your vestibular system and that's what's going to make you... So how do we cope with this stuff? How do we leans and, and inversion? How do we prevent this from even happening? Well, by knowing about it, right? 
Um, let's say you are in that position and you're in liens and you don't know about it. Or if you are, if you see your altim, if you see your, your altimeter just going down to the ground, now you might look, okay, before I pull up, I need to look at my attitude or I need to look at my turn coordinator and make sure I'm not in, in, a, in, a, in a bank or a turn or anything like that. So let me wings lever first and then pull so I don't end up in a graveyard stall. Okay, so that is pretty much all I'm going to cover in this session video. Um, there is a little bit more I could have run over. Uh, just be aware of featureless terrain, um, landing on a narrower, narrower runway narrower runway or a wider runway that, you, that you're uh, used to um, that's more of a private level thing but if you want me to explain that uh, i can put that in another video just put your uh, suggestions or questions on the in the comments below and i'll go ahead and handle that for you too so hey if you're still here with me thank you so much for watching to the end if you have any suggestions questions comments or concerns please put them in the comments below and i shall see you guys in the next next training session but until then keep flying keep learning and always have fun. I'll see you guys next time.